Can a vehicle that has small everything be competitive when fighting against normal sized tanks? Because small cannon means less damage, small amount of crew members, less survivability, and small engine means that the vehicle cannot carry heavy armor. But in this video I'll try to prove to you that it doesn't matter how big or small you are, it's all about if you can use what you have in a way that enhances your best qualities and hides the weaknesses. I proudly present to you Elan 90 Mark 7, a vehicle that has small everything. This light tank has a relatively small cannon, 90mm. Relatively, because it's a bit smaller than average when compared to other tanks of around 7.0 battle rating. But this cannon uses pen stabilized heat rounds that are very effective at penetrating armor despite their size. They can punch through 320 mm. At vehicle's battle rating, you will rarely meet tanks that have a reactive or usual armor that would be able to resist these rounds, so when I played this tank, the penetration was never an issue. The post penetration damage? That's a different story. To be successful with these rounds, you have to pay attention where you shoot. Ideally, you want to one shot opponents by detonating their ammunition. But it's not always possible since it can be hidden deeper inside the vehicle or a war thunder moment happens and the ammunition simply refuses to detonate. So in many cases you will have to hit an opponent's tank multiple times to destroy it. Have to hit multiple times. That sounds like it's some kind of job. Let's put it this way. You will be able to humiliate your opponent longer before it's destroyed. Every sentence is better when you make it more sadistic. Luckily, the penetration allows you to shoot where you want rather than looking for weak spots. And if you cannot reach ammo, you want to knock out opponent's gunner to disable the tank, and then you have enough time to reload and safely finish the rest of the crew. Because vehicle's reload is shorter than it takes for a gunner to be replaced. With Ace Crew, it's 6.7 seconds to reload a cannon against 8 seconds replacement of crew member. By the way, do you know how an Ace Crew is called when you play on winter maps? Iced Crew? When fighting tanks that don't have that many crew members, for example Soviets, a well-placed shot can knock out most of the crew at once, even with this round despite its weak post-penetration damage. Additionally, all explosive rounds can destroy a light vehicle instantly with overpressure, though the amount of explosives in this round is small, so it doesn't happen reliably all the time. And explosive rounds cannot be shot through walls, which is especially annoying with small tanks like this one, since it's difficult to break walls with a tank's hull. It gets noticeably more difficult to destroy tanks at longer ranges. The damage becomes more random because you don't have that much control over what part of the opponent you are hitting. The penetration of the heat round stays the same, there are no issues with that. But it's more difficult to target ammunition or specific crew members because one pixel sideways over great distance may result in no results. Additionally, the muzzle velocity of your round is 750 meters per second, which is quite slow, so there might be difficulties hitting the opponent's vehicle in general. But I have a life hack for you. You don't need to shoot over long distances if you drive a long distance towards opponents and shoot from there. This vehicle is designed to be behind enemy lines. Small size allows it to hide behind most objects on a map and most importantly, small silhouette means there are less pixels moving so you won't trigger every War Thunder tank player's kill reflex so easily. Multiple times I was able to pass by unnoticed where it wouldn't be possible to stay undetected with any normal size tank. Additionally, it's a somewhat fast vehicle, though I wouldn't call its mobility great. There are other light tanks with tires that are faster. This vehicle has a maximum speed of 90 kph, but you won't be able to reach it even on roads. While on medium terrain it barely reaches 50 and on sand or snow maps speed decreases even more. 
It still remains somewhat fast, but on those type of maps only your size remains advantageous. The reverse is good, up to 17 kph, and it's very useful when disengaging, especially together with a smoke screen, since you will need to disengage a lot. The vehicle survives as long as no one can see it. Once someone notices you, either shoot first and don't miss, or put on your shoes. Because someone is going to go to the hangar, and it's not your opponent. The vehicle has very thin armor, up to 12 mm. It barely resists low caliber machine gun rounds. Everything else will easily penetrate it and your crew members won't like it. Of course, sometimes you might survive a PHE round because its fuse won't activate, but it doesn't happen very often. I wouldn't risk and disengage as soon as someone looks at me, which might not be possible when someone is looking at you from above. You will be attacked by planes all the time. Hiding near buildings will make attacking you difficult but not impossible, and you cannot even defend yourself properly since both of your low caliber machine guns that don't do any damage don't even elevate that much. In all my games there was only one instance where machine guns were actually useful. In the rest of cases they just attract unnecessary attention and you don't want to attract attention towards this tank at all. For example, trying to capture a point with this vehicle almost guarantees you a trip to the hangar. To minimize already small vehicle's silhouette even further, you can hide your hull behind a hill. The cannon has 8 degrees of gun depression, which is not too bad. But playing hull down is not as beneficial as with other tanks, since this vehicle already has a small hull, so there is not much to hide in the first place. The most dangerous moments are when someone notices you while you are still moving. You cannot shoot at opponent immediately, since the vehicle's base cannot provide a stable platform for your cannon, so the hull wobbling is very bad. But when you flank properly, opponents should be unaware of you. That's the whole purpose of flanking. You have to play carefully and stay undetected in order to avoid situations where unstable cannon becomes an issue. In arcade, the vehicle is noticeably faster and battle rating is a bit smaller. But it doesn't help. At all. The whole point of this vehicle is to have a low profile. Opponents should become aware of you only when their destruction replay shows up. Arcade is terrible for a tank that relies on being undetected. Additionally, planes that will see the name of your vehicle will be very happy to attack you during all battle. And of course, let's not forget that players' name tags will be shown through walls and trees, which will detonate your rounds, but won't stop incoming opponents' projectiles. In arcade, there is no place for vehicles such as this one. Pretty much every downside of this vehicle is compensated by its ability to stay undetected. Who needs armor or stabilizer when most of the time opponents don't even know about you and you can shoot first? Heat rounds penetration allows you to choose what crew members to knock out or what module to destroy first, no matter how thick armor is at that part of the tank. In most cases, you are the one who decides what and when to engage. I was surprised how often I was able to sneak behind enemy lines and then pick up opponents one by one. I would rate this vehicle 8, turrets bigger than the hull out of 10. It's definitely one of the most fun vehicles to play. It gives you the sense of controlling what's happening on the battlefield. At first I thought I'll just make a video about it just because that tank looks unusual. It's always more interesting to review uncommon vehicles. But I was pleasantly surprised by how effective it was.